Hi, Salwe. Uh, in this lesson, which is going to be uh, based on Comenius, um, so that we can start working our way further into Adler, we're going to be looking at the noun. Now, the last the last lesson was about the verb. The noun presents more difficulties for English speakers than the verb, um, simply because. Uh, as I said, Latin is not linear, and so the, the meaning of the words is contained within the form of the noun itself. To get to used to this, we have to learn the different forms. Now, it would be very simple if there was only one type of, of form, but they are not. There are five different forms of words, and these are called the declensions, and there are five of them. One, two, three, four, five. It's very convenient that the human hand is structured this way. And in fact, the, the Roman grammarians use the terminology of the human hand to describe how the nouns go about their business. For example, they talk about using the little articles, um, little article, articulus, a little joint, these little joints here. Um, and they talk about how the joints bend. And they talk about bending a noun, bending a noun which means that you, the noun is being taken through its parts. So what I'm going to do, because they are very conveniently one, two, three, four, five, six parts to each noun, we're going to use the human hand. And I've devised, a, after a bit of experimentation, this science fiction hand, which we're going to be using. And we have the first type of word, second type of word, third type of word, fourth type of word, and fifth type of word. And these are called declensions. So first declension, second declension, third declension, fourth declension, and fifth declension. And then we have the different jobs that the, the words do, represented by dots. I haven't put a dot on my arm, but it's here and here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the whole point is with these declensions is that you can learn them in order, but that's pretty useless. Um, with a, a map of the declensions like this, we can jump around very easily from place to place. And this is a much better way because when we're speaking, um, it's not a convenient map. We need to be able to jump around and just learning them in, in order um, is not particularly useful. It's far more useful to associate them with a location. So this is what we're going to be doing. So um, a noun. Nouns in, in Latin have got gender. Uh, I've mentioned this before. We have little girly nouns, feminine ones. And we have boy nouns, masculine ones. And we have neuter nouns, which are neither one nor the other. Uh, so example, for example, um, a naturally masculine noun, uh, hic rex, this king. So a king is naturally masculine. Haik, regina, this queen, that's a naturally feminine noun. And hoc regnum, this kingdom. Kingdom is neuter, it doesn't have a gender in Latin. Um, and there are a whole lot of rules about gender, and then there are an enormous number of exceptions. So Latin might have this regularity, which we can see here and the regularity which we can see here, but it also has a, like any language, um, a number of exceptions. How does this system of declension work? Well, Comenius came up with a, a way of explaining it to six-year-olds, and I think it works quite well for six-year-olds, and it works for 60-year-olds equally well. So he did it this way. He said, well, we ask questions, and we can see what's going on from the answers. So who is standing over there is the first question. And we're assuming that our Lord and Master is standing over there. Um, we can't see him, but there he is, our Lord and Master, the Dominus. Um, so that's his name, Dominus. So quis ibi stat, who stands there? Dominus. The master stands there. The master, the subject of the sentence, in the nominative. It's a second type word, so we put it here. Dominus, and here it is. Dominus, ending in U-S, Dominus. 
Waka yeah. ilum, call him. So we're going to address this master directly. And we say, domine, domine. We notice that the us ending has changed to e, domine. Now, this is the only type where this happens. Although we have the second dot on all of these other fingers, um, except for a few Greek words, which we're not going to worry about at the moment, we can point at the master. It's only the second finger that does pointing, and it's only the calling, the vocative case, on the second finger that changes. All the others remain the same when we are calling someone's name. So, Dominus, you're calling him, Salve Domine, hello Domine, Salve Domine. Um, a lot of the English forms of Roman names come, of course, from the, the vocative, because that's what you're used to hearing when you call someone's name. For example, Gaius, Gaius, in the, the it's a, ends in Ius, Gaius, it's still us, but it's I-U-S. The vocative is slightly different. It's Gai, Gai, and of course we have our English name Gai, that comes straight from there. Um, it's the vocative form, Gai. Um, Dominus, Domine. Marcus, Marque, and things like that. So, quis ibi stat, Dominus, and Walker ilum, call him. Domine, salve Domine. So, Dominus, Domine. Quius est vox, whose voice is it? So we have now the possessive form of the word, the master's voice. So we say, Domini, Domini of the master, Domini, Domini. This book is a book written by Comenius, so Comenius, and we say it's Comenii of Comenius, so Comenius's, Comenii. So Dominus, Domini, Comenius, Comenii, or um, we will say Marx, or of Mark, Marcus in the nominative, Marque in the vocative, Sawe Marque, and Marquis of Mark, or Marx. This is the possessive, also called the genitive. So possessivus in Latin, or genitivus. And we say in genitivo in the genitive, or in possessivo, in the possessive. Cui servis? Who do you serve? Now, servio is a Latin verb that takes the dative. So, you serve to someone. So, you serve to the master. And that's this form here. Um... The dative. We've already seen the dative, of course. Est mihi. Est mihi. Mihi would go here. Mihi. To me. So we want to say to the master, and that becomes domino. 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 To the master. So, cui servis. Who do you serve? Who do you give service to? Who do you serve? Domino. To the master. So, a Roman would say, I serve to the master. To the master. It's dative, it's giving, giving service. Quam vides. Quam vides, who do you see? So, quam vides, who do you see? Vides. Video, I see. Vides, you see. Quam vides, whom do you see? And that's going to be an accusative. An accusative. Remember, I was pointing before like that. So, quem vides, who do you see? I see the master. I see the master. So, dominus here changes into dominum. Dominum. So, video dominum. Video dominum. Let's run through what we have so far. We have dominus, domine. Domini, 
domino, dominum. And finally, we have what's called the ablative case. It's the last of them, number six, which we're going to stick up here on our arms. And it would be very helpful if you were to be imitating me with your hand. You might even want to get an old washing up glove, which I've done here. It's one of these yellow things. I just turned it inside out. And with a um, permanent marker, made these dots on it. It's not that hard. Dots on the fingertips, dots on, dots on the middle knuckles, dots on the end knuckles, and three dots on the thumb, because we need three here. Okay, three dots on the thumb, and a big dot for the dative, and then no dot here, unless you have a really long glove, of course. The accusative and the ablative. So the ablative, cum quo ibis, with whom do you go? Cum quo ibis. Ibo, I go. Ibis, you go. Cum quo ibis, with whom do you go? With whom do you go? Domino, with the master. Domino, 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 with the master. As you'll notice in this, in this particular declension, the dative, domino, and the ablative, domino, are the same in the singular. So, I'm going to ask you now to give me some forms of this noun. Um, I'm going to ask firstly the questions. Quis ibi stat? Who stands there? Quis ibi stat? Is it going to be, which of these is it going to be? It's going to be, of course, the nominative, the dominus. Nominative case, dominus. Ending in us, dominus. Quem vides? Who do you see? Whom do you see? Quem vides? And that's going to be our accusative here. Video dominum, dominum. So us, and this ending here is um. Dominus, us. Dominum. Uh, cui servis? Who do you serve? Cui servis? So, servio, I serve. Servio, in the dative, here we have it, putting it into the palm of my hand, giving case. Servio, domino. Servio, domino. So, servio, domino. And, uh, cum quo ibis? Who are you going with? Up here. Domino in ablative. Domino. And calling case. Waka ilum. Call him. Waka ilum. That's an instruction. Call him. Waka ilum. So calling him. Domine. 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 So our endings are. Us, e, i, o, um, o. So, o and o, and um, and i, and e, and us. So, I'm going to ask you now, and you think about it for a second, where is the ablative on my arm? It's here. Where is the accusative on my arm? It's here. Where is the vocative? It's here. Where is the nominative? The thing itself. It's right at the top, of course, because it's the where is the genitive or the possessive case? And it's here. Now, of course, it's easy to remember that the possessive case goes here, because if you're wearing a, a wedding ring, which indicates some form of possession, of course, it sits about here on your, you know, it sits in this part of your finger. So this is where the possessive part is. And the dative, the giving case, easy to remember in the palm of your hand, or on the back of your, palm, on the back of your hand, but in the same place. So, dative, the accusative case, this is the, what the verb is acting on, 
here, the forearm, the ablative case up here. So we have our first declension, second declension, third declension, fourth declension, fifth declension, and then we have our one, two, three, four, five, six cases. Now what I'm going to be doing with you quite regularly is testing you on these using the magic glove. Um, and I do suggest that you make a little glove like this yourself. Um, it's quite useful. Um, and I think it's also very useful to touch yourself while you're doing it. So you associate the sound and you associate the form with a physical response in your body. And that will also help you remember. It will help you remember what declension something is in because some part of your brain when you hit a word will remember what finger you've touched um, and that will help you remember what declension the word is uh, okay so that's it for for today's or this this lesson Wale.